Hi, my name is Ian and uh, welcome to my channel where we mess around with all sorts of things from music to, to games to whatever comes to mind. <clears throat> Probably find some bits and pieces on making model bows and tying knots somewhere as well. Um, this is the third in my um, pseudo unboxing uh, series on the Deep Night Revelation materials that were launched by Mongoose for their edition of their second edition of Traveller, uh, the Deep Night Revelation box set, and uh, we've already covered the box set. We've already covered the Kickstarter commemorative set um, with all of its patches and pencils, and this time out, it's a bit late. These came uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, but this are the six volumes of of expansion books hardback books for uh, for the for the box set and for the epic adventure that the set represents so just a little bit of a recap on what it's all about um, the deep deep night revelation is a massive campaign uh, that can encompass all sorts of things that you you want it to do the scope of it is just huge uh, beyond anything in size that has been attempted for Traveller before and it has um, it has overtones of um, uh, TV shows I suppose like like Battlestar Galactica there's some elements similar to that there are some elements that are similar to Star Trek Voyager um, there are elements similar to Lost in Space uh, just a, a whole bunch of things but uh, uh, mix that all up together in into a huge adventure that is a leap into the unknown. Now, that leap into the unknown gives you as a traveller referee a huge amount of um, of scope for inserting anything you like and we kind of covered um, my intent for it uh, which is to, to pick up some older traveller adventures that have that have not seen the light of day in my uh, my collections for a while uh, and see if I can fit them in. I've already got some ideas of, uh, especially some of the old uh, FASA adventures that could uh, could slot in quite nicely with a bit of modification to the uh, to the environment at hand. Uh, the environment at hand being uh, the huge area of of I keep saying huge, but never mind. It, it, it is um, it is indicative of the scope of this thing of how much space is involved um, so yes so we're talking about an area of space potentially an area of space that the the campaign covers that is three or four times larger than the Imperium itself so that maybe gives you some idea right so to help you out <clears throat> the box set contains the start and the end of the campaign um, and uh, a book of rules for being able to do things like um, abstract out uh, crew actions on the large space uh, spaceship that uh, that the characters will be a part of on board, uh, and uh, and some advice and campaign rules and descriptions uh, to be able to fill in the details and to help you run the campaign. Uh, the expansion books, they are, they cover legs of the campaign. Uh, so while they, uh, I suppose you could actually just run it using the expansion books and the materials in the box set and just and just run that. But I think it's more fun to be able to fill out and round out the details as well. Um, so these really are are touchstone. They they give you they fill in some of the touchstone points of the campaign between the start of it and the end of it. Uh, the books are numbered. Uh, I've got them in order of pile, so one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, and they they are in order, the no, they're in numbered order of the where they appear within the framework of the campaign as given. Uh, so there, there are six books, six hardback books. They're, they're all quite lengthy. One of the things I was, um, I don't know, not hoping for was the, that's not the right word, but uh, considering 
thinking that it might be. Um, in the in the Great Rift box set, for example, um, the Great Rift box has got room enough for all the maps and and books and everything else that came with the box set. The Great Rift box set is another Mongoose Traveller um, campaign setting, uh, and the expansion adventures and so on that, that were released for that box set uh, all neatly fit inside the box. There's enough room inside the box for for those. Now, uh, I don't know why, but I was thinking that maybe these uh, these books would and the box would work in the same way so that they, they fit inside the box. So all of the Deep Night Revelation materials would be in that one campaign box at the end of the... Uh, at the end of when everything was delivered and received. Um, I should have known better because we did receive the PDFs of these during the Kickstarter. Um, so I did half have a, an understanding of how big they were, but I think until you get a physical book, it's not always obvious how large or what kind of page count or whatever a, a PDF has, but uh, regardless, they, they are hardback. They're, they are hardback for a reason. They are not they are not like hugely thick books, but they are not insignificant. Um, yeah, 100 and, 112 pages. Um, I think there are a couple of that are... Yeah, about 112, this looks like the... Uh, it looks like the ballpark. <clears throat> so that's that's quite, quite significant um, for an adventure. And they do have to cover quite a lot in the scope that's been laid out for each book. Uh, you're talking new species uh, to interact with, uh, star system descriptions, um, new equipment, new starships, new civilizations. Uh, so there's a lot of a lot of stuff that's going on in this. <clears throat> um, so they they are in order. So rift rift side, uh, sorry, rifts edge transit is book one. The near side of yonder is book two. The crossing. Book three, the far side of nowhere. Book four, Voidshaw. Book five, and expeditions is book six. Uh, and these all lie between the uh, the first adventure in the or the two adventures that are within the box set, which, as I said, they describe the first adventure, which is. Sort of shake down, gathering the crew together, getting things sorted, and uh, the, the first, the initial forays out into the unknown, and the final adventure, which is sort of wraps things up and uh, and gives you the uh, the the conclusion, the the travellers reach their goal and what happens there. So the whole campaign arc, if you like, is the box set. Excuse you start and finish and then these six volumes which give you uh, things to fit in between those two in in order of the of the voyage as it on goes and uh, rounding out <coughs> uh, what you as a referee want to put in there I, I mean I'm I'm kind of excited I've having read through these and the the box set now I've got all sorts of things going on in my head about what I want to do uh, do with it. Um, I've got, like I said, I've got some old Traveller Adventures I want to uh, manipulate so they'll fit into the framework. Um, there's some bits and pieces from, uh, from not the new Battlestar Galactica, but the old uh, 70s, uh, 70s and 80s series of Battlestar Galactica that I want to fit in. Um, not you know, a copy for out the TV, but I mean, you know, inspired by, I think there would uh, be an interesting inserts into there. Uh, and then, as I said in my previous video, um, you need to give the travellers space to do those things that they, uh, the routine things, the routine things like, you know, keeping the ship going, um, finding fuel, finding supplies, uh, and, and that. So, uh, the, the the campaign framework breaks things down into those routine operations, um, those uh, missions and operations that can be abstracted out into a into a uh, success or failure or things happen, 
kind of point of view and then more detailed uh, things whether the travelers actually have to go and, uh, and run in a, a traditional uh, role-playing game format um, these are all adventures and the abstractions and the rules for doing those abstractions are within the within the campaign book of the at uh, the referees book of the of the um, deep night revelation box set uh, so the danger <clears throat> the danger is swamping the whole thing with adventures because if it's just an adventure an adventure an adventure all uh, all the way through the whole thing for a start it will probably take you 50 years to play the whole thing out because of the the hugeness of it um, and for a second i think it just be it would just be too much um, you you need to give the pl excuse me you need to give the players some level of downtime in order to do uh, the the record keeping the uh, the day to day running of the ship and to get used to that uh, the first adventure in the box set the first adventure in the box set has scope within it i think to introduce the players to the core concepts of what they will be doing within the whole mission the whole campaign itself so um, so I think if you're going to run it, I suggest you do read through that first adventure. It's not the biggest, it's, it's a small, um, about a third the size of one of these. Uh, but the, the scope within it is, it, it gives you room to be able to introduce the rules of the, the way that things are going to be abstracted out uh, to the players. To I mean, it's one thing the referee knowing about all these abstracted missions and, and what to do, but it's ultimately the players that are running the campaign. The referee is there just to facilitate their their uh, enjoyment and their exploration of the uh, campaign's framework. So uh, in order for them to be able to make decisions about uh, about how they want to go and which directions they want to go take the campaign in, uh, they need to know the systems at play and and how they work. So the so the shakedown idea um, and the the initial sort of you know short hops between um, the the initial starting point and their jump off point into the depths of uh, of unknown space, which is what this is all about. Really exploring unknown space. It's a massive exploration campaign with a, uh, a meta plot over the top of it. Um, but they, the players do need to understand what systems are at play within the game, within the campaign, in order to be able to uh, get themselves involved in that. So anyway, that's um, that's these. I'm not going to go into them because it's new. I don't mind giving spoilers for old, uh, old adventures from way back or certain levels of spoilers. But um, But I'm certainly not going to go in delve into spoilers for something that is virtually brand new that uh, that people will be hopefully picking up and playing uh, imminently um, so that, that's why I haven't opened any of these books uh, I'll just I'll just tell you the the quality of the artwork and the layouts uh, is uh, is typical of the mongoose traveler books that they have brought out in recent years um, it's very good, very glossy. Um, there are a couple of illustrations that don't seem to match the text as well. Like there's a couple of of alien species um, that uh, that don't wholly match up. But you know that's that's a minor minor thing. I'm not I'm not that overly fussed with uh, with artwork in role playing game books. It's not one of my priorities that I look for in a book. Um, they're very good. Uh, I think they verge on pseudoscience in a couple of areas, but that's that's manageable. Uh, it it depends on what you want out of your out of your game. Uh, if you want hard science Asimov levels, then you may have to curtail your your uh, suspension of disbelief a little bit. Or not curtail, enforce your suspension of disbelief. But um, but if you want, you know, your typical speculative science fiction type thing, as you see in Battlestar Galactica and and Star Trek and and similar uh, similar non-science fantasy uh, elements, then uh, then this is um, 
This will be right up your alley and you will have absolutely no problems other than the scope. The scope isn't something that you need to think about uh, how to manage and how to manage the players in and this campaign, make no mistake, this campaign will take you a long time to play um, through from start to finish. So uh, it be it, expect your players to be on the long haul. The, one of the beauties of it actually, um, there are points all the way through, not, not, le not the least the crew itself that they take through and the crew are not detailed to the nth degree and nor should you detail the crew to the nth degree. All of this sort of map only as necessary type things applies uh, absolutely to this campaign. If you try and map everything out, describe every crew member and take everything to the nth degree, you'll drive yourself insane. But it also won't serve the, the campaign. The uh, MOAN will really help you out if you keep the crew abstract until, say, one of the player characters dies. I think that's probably going to be inevitable, maybe, on something of this scope. Uh, and it, if they do die, then you have got a whole crew that, um, uh, of undetailed abstract characters that you can then... Um, you know, the, the player can then go through the character generation process to build themselves a new character to carry on the campaign. And it's also one of the beauties of Traveller being a skill-based game rather than a level-based game, is that that's, that's perfectly fine. You, you just need to set the experience of the character, um, the, uh, the, the term or whatever, and you might, you might run them through um, some of uh, give them an, an additional couple of terms in order to represent their experiences on board the Deep Night Revelation on its quest up to the point where they come from an abstract non-player character into a a more detailed player character. Um, so you know, run through the standard character generation and then run a catch up to to bring them up to speed to uh, to reflect that level of experience. Um, but you don't have to worry about, you know, oh, it's meant to be a 10th level game, so this will, new character will be fifth level. Yeah, leveled games um, uh, can be annoying in that that perspective. Uh, and also, there are uh, during the course of these things, there are areas where um, new, new player characters can also come into play. Um, so, and, you know, not, it could be interesting for a player that has just lost his beloved um, player character from, from uh, Imperial Space to generate a character from, um, from a new civilization that has been, uh, has been discovered along the way, opens up those role-playing uh, possibilities. Lots of it. Massive scope in the campaign. Uh, these are a massive help to referees. The box set is really helpful in the way it is. I especially love the abstract rules. And the abstract rules I think I will use elsewhere as well. Um, I don't think any of the material, other than the specifics of the adventure, the, the material that's in the, in, um, the Deep Light of Revelation box for running the campaign is applicable to, uh, to other areas as well, to other campaigns that you might want to run with a traveller bent to them. Um, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Uh, I think I have said everything I want to say on these books. It's an interesting campaign. These adventures do really well as bridging points between uh, touchstones along the, the campaign scope and you can let your imagination run wild. It's... Uh, I think it's a really good thing that Mongoose have introduced Traveller players to. A different way of playing Traveller, or a different, a different campaign uh, umbrella for, uh, for Traveller than, uh, than we've seen before. So Mongoose, keep up the good work. Keep on putting out things that are different. Um, you know, try not to give us the Binwood Marches ad infinitum. And... Uh, all you Traveller players out there, I hope you have fun playing this, because I'm pretty sure I will too. 
So, that's my take. Deep Night Revelation, uh, the, the Adventures 1 through 6 to fit the Deep Night Revelation campaign framework. Until next time.